Welcome to the podcast. How are you, Paul? <laughs> that was your intro? Yeah, I like, I like surprising you. <laughs> Wait, subscribe below. A bingo board. You're not going to do the subscribe <laughs> shit? Oh, You always do it for me. YouTube, baby. Subscribe. And I recommend everybody watch our podcast on YouTube because we're getting a, a, a digital board soon. And it's also nicer to see Seth and I. We can't talk about Tesla again. By the same token, though. We did have an ar- I mean, not an argument. We had a healthy discussion. About what? Today. I said, at what point is You thought that was an argument? No, I, I, no, not an argument. It was just like, I kept on saying, Paul, I, be- I still believe in this con- company as much as I did uh, years ago. Except now the stock What is- does that even mean? Well, I don't believe in Hoover vacuums. Why not? I don't know. I don't, I don't have any personal tie to them. I don't care but, about their success. But what does it cool mean? About- why does it mean that you have to believe? When you say you don't, but you believe in Tesla, what does that mean that you believe in them? I, I guess I mean that I believe that if the market go- goes up or down, I still think it's a great company. And so but what does it being a great company have anything to do with the stock price? You tell me. No, you tell me. You're the one who wants to pay through the nose for this. Um, that's one, by the way. <laughs> uh, Can you put Don's microphone on? Don, are you there? I'm here. Say it again. I'm here. There we go. Okay. Um, Don, maybe move the mic closer if you want to talk a little bit. Sure. Um, that way, there you go. I love you. He sounds great. Yeah, no, you're right. Maybe that's stupid to say I believe in this company because I hear a lot of people saying that. Boy, I really believe in this company or I believe in Bitcoin. So I'm not trying to pat myself on the back here. Okay, go on. I'll look up the price while you're here. However... I used to always throw the analogy about the airline industry. Mm -hmm. And now, not now, I've also read recently, Warren Buffett does the same thing. Clearly, airlines change the entire world. Automotive changed the entire world. Do you know how many airlines and automotive businesses have collapsed and gone to zero in the last century? Even though how much? No, I don't know. Thousands. Thousands? Thousands of airlines and and auto companies. Thousands. So here's a growing huge industry, but you still have companies in there that don't operate it well. When I asked you, what's Tesla worth today? It is worth four times more than Ford. Ford. But it sells, it, last year it sold 350,000 cars and Ford sold- Two point something million. 2.5 million. Okay. So if we're valuing, valuing Tesla at four times more than Ford, that means they should, when they, they'll be worth this when they get to 10 million cars. Forget about gross margin. Tesla's is better. So let's say it's 7 million cars. Okay. So they basically need a triple in size. They need a triple Ford size to justify today's value. So if you're buying them today and they do get to 7.5 million, which is growth of 20 times, you're basically going to be break even. Because I asked you, well, if they sell the same number of cars as Ford. Should they be the same value, more value, less value? You're like, well, the same value roughly. Okay then why are we giving them three times the four times the value when they're not even close to that? And for them to justify that, they have to be over double the size. It doesn't even make sense. But people don't look at companies as businesses. They look at them as Magic the Gathering cards, right? Ba-ding. If I asked all my friends, Tesla's selling at $900 a share, what's the company market cap? No one would know. If I put two companies together and said, which one's worth more? I put Ford's data and Tesla's data. What would people say? Ford. Ford. But people, you don't think. You people are just lemmings. The whole. So I said the whole world. Ninety nine. Yes. That. By the way, that's exactly my point. The argument you say, the, the argument you make for Democrats, the same argument you make for liberalism, is the same argument I make as like, yeah. And these are also the same idiots who paid nine hundred dollars a share for Tesla, without understanding the facts behind things. The facts behind Tesla's value today means it has to be triple the size of Ford to justify today's value. So today's value in the stock market is just pure hype and- Well, of course. If you think about it this way, Seth, if, if, if Tesla tripled in the next five years, what, would happen, what should the stock do? Triple? But you've already paid for it to be two and a half, three times larger than Ford. So at what point do you sit there and say, oh, well, I guess I have no upside then? This stock couldn't triple from- Of course it could. It's at 922 But now? it doesn't mean it's justifiable because in that point, the stock's worth- the, stock, the company should be selling 21 million cars a year. Let me hold you back. Are there, what other companies are like this where just from pure passion and, and, and passion and uh, Well, the entire, dot com, the, the entire dot com business, Amazon, Netflix. You never get in on any of this? I mean, nope. on Monday, nope. you, I, we were like, oh, nope. Tesla's at 522. Nope. And someone nope. said, nope. I literally look at the world and say, what do you guys think? Okay, I'll do the opposite because you are all stupid. Your nine-year-old son 
has Tesla stock. Case in point. Well, it was, he thought it was fun to buy. He wanted the defense to rests. It, that, that to me is the indication that you should not own Tesla stock. Your nine-year-old son has Tesla. I don't mean that your son's an idiot, but your son's, your son's nine years old. Well, he wanted to invest. He probably puts his underwear on backwards sometimes. He wanted to invest. He's not investing, though. He's speculating. In something that he's passionate about. He's not investing. He's speculating. If he's investing, I'd like to have a conversation with your son about the financial statements of Tesla. Investing is about understanding and realizing how you're going to make your money back. This is not a popular stance. You're saying every Tesla shareholder... It depends what they're... they're are they bought at? Or? It depends. So here's the deal. Bull markets make luck seem like skill. Mm-hmm. Right? Let me write that down in my mind. Every bull market makes the lucky feel like they're skillful. The bear markets show you who really is skilled. Who hasn't made money in stocks in the last four or five years? You. Basically me. Okay, but hold on a second. Um, Everybody in the world's made money on stocks in the last five years. Why? Because every because the because a rising at what, at what uh, a rising tide uh, raises, all, raises ships, all ships, including what, the stupid ones. At what point? Yeah. Do you not? sort of put your money where your mouth is and say, um, English, please. At what point do you say, well, this is still good money. Why don't I just get on this for a couple months? Because I don't know when the, the party's going to end. And if I don't know when the party's going to end, and well, I don't what, is wanna... the, what does an end look like? Like tomorrow it ends. What's that look like? Nine to 30 strikes. And then what? I'm going to say this. If you look at the history of stocks, there are people out there who think 20% pullback would be awful. Guys, it's going to be bad. Tell me, so, if you ha- so you ready? I buy today at 920. Mm-hmm. I buy 10 shares. Mm-hmm. 9,000 bucks. Mm-hmm. And then tomorrow, the end occurs. What does it look like? It opens Who at. Who knows? It opens at. I don't know. I don't know. What it, would it look like? I, I don't know. What has it looked like? There are many companies who've gone to zero. Tomorrow morning is zero. No, not tomorrow morning. So but but you know it, what? But is there time to get out? I mean, the point is. is but there... you wrote it from 380 down to 215, then back up to 330. Why didn't you get out at 215? The same mentality that didn't get you out at 215 is not going to get you out at 400, not going to get you out at 500, not going to get you out at 600. Because you think it'll go back up. That's what these bull markets do. They suck you back in. But, oh, it always goes back up. But you have money in the market, right? No, I have zero money in the market. I'm not oh. stupid. Ever? You don't have any. No, ever. right now I don't have money in the market. I'm not stupid, remember? I forgot about that. <laughs> that was my jab to all you people out there. Listen, there's a difference between what I do and what most people should do, which is have money in broad-based index funds, broad-based funds that grow with time and not think about it. But don't consider that investing. So, That's so retirement Tesla, savings. Tesla is not a, obviously not a broad-based investment fund. I was probably silly. Tesla is one of the stupidest stocks you can own and call it an investment. Literally. It is worth over three times what Ford is worth, and it sells 15% uh, of the cars, 85% less cars, with a slightly better gross margin, 22% versus 16 17%. Okay, it's five, six percentage points better. I got it. It's still, it's still good money. But if, Okay, so is there a situation where Ford could not adapt, and Ford is just showing its hand in that it's just not that great what, of a... What's so big about electric cars? What's so novel about it? Who owns the patent on it? Is it Tesla? Um, I mean, you can see that Tesla's been around for eight years, and the companies are trying been to copy. For longer than eight years, two thousand three. Okay, either way, they're. I'm sorry. Well, making great cars is like the, the first S is Model S as it came out. I'm, I'm, you know, maybe 2011 or something. I don't know. Maybe earlier. Mm-hmm. But the point is, what if this? It's valued this because it's supposed to be, and Ford's just a bad company that's on its way out. It can't. Maybe. It can't. But you're still paying three times more than Ford for a company that sells 85% less cars. Well, if Ford's a bad company that no one believes in, maybe it's on its way out, then maybe well, it's not. Okay, t- forget about Ford then. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Pick Toyota. How f-ing big is Toyota right now? I don't know. We always just talk about Ford. Let's say I, it's, let's, let, 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 let me say what the market cap of okay, Toyota is. Hold, please. I guess uh, if you're looking for Toyota, it's trading at 141. Okay, 230. Not, that, I'm not worried about what it's trading at, okay. which is a great $230 billion market cap. Tesla is 166, so it's smaller, about 30% smaller. How many cars did Toyota sell last year? That was the first time that Don talked in his mic and that we didn't prompt him, so yeah. I just heard, like, God talking. <laughs> <laughs> they was... sold 10 million cars last year. 
10 million and, so, and, and Tesla sold 350,000? 350,000. So 10, 10 million, million cars, oh, $230 billion market cap. 350,000 cars, $160 billion market cap. If that makes sense to you. He's going to start screaming. i got to back off his mic a bit. You are f***ing stupid. Ding, 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 ding. Send me your money. I will burn half of it, send you it back, and you will probably be better off in life. Yeah. Tesla fanboys. Great. And you know what? I know some of them. And the funny thing is, there's one of those idiots who owns a house in Mexico with um, next door to us. He's a Tesla fanboy. But when you talk about his company that he owned... He, and he might, when I offered him graciously because I know he wanted to buy a house and I got it, it's like, well, I'll have to see the numbers. Oh, so he cares about the numbers of those things, but he doesn't care numbers about a, a publicly traded company. That's the stupidity. People think they're buying baseball cards. You're buying a business. You're buying a cash flowing entity. Tesla literally has to borrow money to pay its bills. I certainly didn't understand that when I was buying of stock. Of course you didn't. I was told that putting money in the and stock And that's why we have bubbles. Is an investment. But your course. brother came down yeah. and was jokingly comically <laughs> saying, we love, we, the proverbial we of Crossroads Group investing. Love stupid people. Love the fact that this price is way up because yep. this will create the bubble we need to, this when, will, it, when the, it bursts, not, it, be ready to pounce. The bubble's already there. This is an absolutely insane market. Literally every single day, it's up almost. The bubble's there. You know, about a thousand points ago in the S and P, I was like, I don't know if it's bubble, but it's wholly inflated. Now, like, no, the bubble's there. It's a hundred percent a bubble. This is one hundred percent a bubble. When I see idiots buying stocks and not, when every single person in the world is up twenty percent, that's a bubble. So, if it ends, yeah, when it, it ends, if it pops, mm -hmm. uh, what does that look like? At nine thirty in the morning, I wake up and my nine hundred Tesla. Why stock, does it matter? I'm just wondering, like, could you still get in? Get, get, get in on this insanity, and then tomorrow, even if it drops half, you still sell. Seth, why don't you go uh, do wedding photos for $1,000 a wedding? Just get in. Just go do it. You have free weekends. It's not your business philosophy. It's not my investing philosophy. Mm. I'm an investor. I, I, my investment philosophy is to buy things I understand and buy cash-flowing businesses. Or, by the way, does that mean if Tesla was at a certain price, I wouldn't buy it? No, of course I would still have it. There's still a price I'd probably buy it at, but they'd have a hard time making money. And I'd look at it going, I have a hard time paying my bills when, I, when the, the companies I invest in don't make money. If all my companies upstairs didn't make money, how would I pay my bills? Borrow money? Borrow money. And then what happens then? What if I end up being wrong? Compounds. It... Look at Tesla. They're great. They're awesome. Innovative. They have a hard time making money though. Well, okay. If they're that innovative, that great, that smart. Borrow. Look at Amazon. Amazon's just now making money. They make $10 billion and they're worth like a trillion bucks. A hundred to one? Hundred to one for a, for a trillion dollar company, you're paying a hundred to one. Okay, obviously I'm the stupid one in the room. Clearly I'm the stupid one because I just don't see it. And then what's going to happen is something's going to happen that's going to cause everybody to go, wait a second, no, I won't buy that, and they'll blame it on that thing. It was the coronavirus. No, it wasn't the coronavirus, you idiots. It was overvaluation. I like Corona. <laughs> So I'm sorry to get aggressive. So this is what's, a drastic what's, over. What's Tesla at now? Nine twenty-five. What's so it's up five dollars in the time we started talking? Probably. I mean, we we were talking about this. We texted each other last Thursday. I said Tesla at five twenty-two, and Mo said it might hit six. Oh, it hit nine twenty-three, nine twenty-five. Unprecedented. Nobody knows. It's not unprecedented. There was actually worse valuations in history during the tech bubble. There were companies with zero revenue who had billion-dollar valuations. That's worse. Yeah. I mean, this is absolutely asinine, but we need to see these things happen. I need, I need to be in my group chat with my five buddies who all don't have a clue what's going on with these companies and they think it's them investing. I think normal people like me say, wow, 20% today, that's, that's uh, three years of interest growing in one day. Yep, and then when I in the tech bubble, I remember friends of mine saying, I didn't make 100% today, what the f Does it sound familiar? I guess, I guess. Sounds exactly familiar. And guess what's going to happen? At some point in the future, people are going to stop talking about stocks. Why? Because they all got burnt. It happens every single time without avail in every asset bubble in history. It's never been different. Not one time in history has it been different. Not one time. We're talking about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of data going all the way back to the 1600s when the tulips were the, the big bubble. So you're telling me there's a hundred, there's a billion dollars 
of like people out there irresponsibly putting it in a Tesla, like no more than a billion dollars. <clears throat> yeah, it's irresponsible because they don't look at it as buying a company. People don't look at buying stocks as buying a company. They look at it as buying baseball cards. Oh, it's a really cool company. I'm going to buy that company, that stock. I mean, it's great. I mean, you go online, the whole world just like this. That should be your indication that it's wrong. When the whole world thinks something, that's when you know it's wrong. The world is stupid in mass. It's been proven time and time and time and time and time and time again. Time again. Never has it ever not been proven. That the world, in, the, the, the biggest revolutionaries in history are the ones who thought independently and didn't do what the world. Every single amazing invention we have here is because somebody thought differently. So you look up to Warren Buffett a lot. Yeah. Like he buys stocks of, of these companies. No, he doesn't. Tell he me loves Coca-Cola, GE. Are you joking that you're trying to compare Coca-Cola to Tesla? No, I'm just saying. Are you trying to compare Coca-Cola Classic who makes money and makes a reasonable multiple of their money Sells for a reason versus Tesla. No, I guess I was confusing the idea that I'm trying to equate that if Tesla is speculative, then what other companies aren't? Is Coca-Cola not speculative? It or? depends on the price. You, Tesla not. could not be speculative. Tesla could be not speculative. If they sold that many cars and they or made money. Or if they sold for a lot less than $925 a share. You think this stock is valued at? I don't should, know. Should be. I don't want to say. Why? Under 100 All day. Last time I looked, last time I tried to figure out a value, I came up with 40 bucks. And that was like a year and a half ago. So maybe it's more, maybe it's more than hundred now. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is it's a joke. I don't even understand how you get to a hundred dollars a share, to be honest with you. That's only, that's a $20 billion market cap still. And I don't know how you're worth $20 billion. Yeah, it's, it's even less than, actually it's less than hundred dollars a share. What am I talking about? I'm thinking Amazon. The first time I ever tried to do Amazon, I thought four, $40 a share. There was a prime example. When I first did Amazon seven years ago, I thought it was worth $40 a share. Now it's two thousand a share. Yeah, and I think it's worth a few hundred dollars a share, like three to three fifty, maybe four hundred after new earnings. I haven't looked at the numbers in the last few months. Okay, it's adjusted, but it's still overpriced because that's what happens. And the people who bought it three hundred feel like geniuses. And I look at them going, "You bought what it's worth." Great. I think uh, when the economy turns, we're gonna have some interesting podcasts. Yeah, we are because. I guess I've put myself in a position much like yours where I kind of pulled my money out from this craziness. But why'd you do that? I, 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 I agreed with your idea to do that because you had like literally 40% of your money in two things. Yeah, Amazon and Tesla. And then another 10%, 15% in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Or 10% in Bitcoin. I'm like, dude, that's for the three most overpriced assets like literally in the world and you have half your net worth in there, that's not a good idea. Well, and again, let me, I mean, let me preface this. And you made your money. It wasn't my net worth when it went in. I know. You and know. you made your money. I was like, listen, take your profits and you'll, you know, we ever went broke taking a good profit. 30,000 bucks with Tesla. And now you could have made like a billion dollars. It's okay. I, uh, you told me at the time I have to be content and, is it content or sort of? Content with that that possibly happening. But. You know, somebody asked me yesterday, what's the best stock I've ever bought? And I was proud to say I don't know. You know why? Not because I have so many, because I never had ones that went up 100 times. That's not my goal. My goal is to buy a good portfolio of stocks that will go up above average as a group over time. Can this ever change with this? Um, can this patient ever waver? I mean, it's been a long time. Yeah, don't waver. Because the, eventually the, the market Your will patience. capitulate. The market will eventually capitulate. No, no, no. I meant your patience of waiting out this huge... Nope. I will be patient till the day I die. As the Walsh kids once asked me, what happens if this never turns? I go, then I never own stock ever again. I'm fine with that because I'm, I'm confident and comfortable in my assessment of businesses. I'm a business analyst. I can look at a business and say, okay, this looks pretty good. This, this looks worse than this. Looks better. Like, things like that. I look at a business the way I'd look at your personal financial state, um, your personal life. How much money do you have coming in? What's your income? How much debt do you have? What do you own your mortgages, taxes, mortgages, credit cards, cars? How many assets are behind it? All right. If you were a person, if Tesla was a person, they're one, they're, they're one paycheck away from bankruptcy. And in fact, a year, a year and change ago, Tesla was very close to bankruptcy. They said they were two weeks away from bankruptcy. That's true. And now all of a sudden they're up five times. Well, you know, I see people now, uh, Jim Cramer's the world, so this could be a $4,000 stock. Jim Cramer said that? Yeah. Oh, wow. So, I mean... It's very low volume. At some point, do you not still... Don't care. Get in at six? Don't care. Get out at four, and Dick, if it crashes at three? Dick, don't care. 
you're saying you would not have you're saying if if someone's are out there right now like me um listen every time i want to buy this stock i, I hear little little paul on my, little birdie paul on my shoulder saying there's a better time to buy mm -hmm. and it goes with businesses houses magic cards you've never experienced a bad market you went into the no. real world in the middle of the bad market. Yeah. You've mm -hmm. never seen a bear market. Tell me about it. Oh, it's a lot different than what it feels like right now. And I have all my friends who are in the bull market. Oh, if, I, if we lost half its value, I'm fine with that. No, you're not. You don't want to, you know, you've never seen your money go down in half. When you see that happen, you freak the f out. Bing. And you start thinking to yourself, oh my God, this is going to zero. Just like you're thinking right now, this is going to 4,000. Seth, go buy some. Get on your phone right now and buy some. It's that easy. It's that simple. I'm not holding you back. I'm not telling you, go buy five shares. It's nothing. If it'll make you feel better, get, make some money. It could change a person like me. I mean, no, it couldn't. 20% return in one year could. On what? How's that going to change your life? Well, it could make up for the past two years of okay. hovering. Go do it. I guess maybe I don't understand the idea of like, I believe in this company. I mean, I drive the damn car. I've loved it for years now. I guess for a kid, my kid said he'd sell at seven. He wanted to sell at seven. Wake his ass up. I know he's homesick right now. Get him on the phone. <laughs> Listen, I, it, it's, it, the hardest part about being a value investor is you never look smart. Because even now... Like I have a hard time, like I said, just, I just have a hard time believing that how many billion, what's the market cap? 100, 160 billion. There's 160 billion of just ridiculous, crazy well, people no, out there. No, 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 no. Some people bought probably a lot lower and they're riding the wave and all that stuff. Okay. I will remind you of every bubble in the history of all bubbles. How many has that been? I don't know. I mean, but guess what? 100 years, right? No, no. I'm talking about, we have a history of bubbles going back to 1600s. The tulip bubble. They were paying tons of money for tulips. Every single bubble, whether it's a small... Real, like Houston real estate bubble, it always ends very poorly. It is never not, to my knowledge. Somebody please prove me wrong. And some idiot's going to try to prove me wrong. And they're going to give some example that isn't even a bubble. Because I'm sure there are, com there are companies out there who've grown into their value. But those are usually really, really small companies. Not Tesla worth $160 billion. Not Amazon worth a trillion dollars. Imagine this world where we don't value cash flow and good financials. That's like sitting there saying, I would rather, how about this? Here's, this, here's an analogy. Let's go pay a minor league baseball player $25 million a year because he could become the next big player. Yeah. That's what you're doing right there. You're paying that minor league baseball player today $25 million a year because he could be the next player. Someone's buying right now. I know. Who are those people? Those could be day traders. Those are people, I really believe it's a lot of short coverage because it's very low volume and it's people trying to cover their short that have gone out of control. Hey, Paul, can you elaborate on short coverage? Thanks, Don. So, yeah, good call, Don. That freaked me out, by the way. That's what I'm saying. You, <laughs> we don't even, like, sorry. I'm sorry, what'd you say, God? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Yes, Satan. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were somebody else. Short covering, when you short a stock, you take it from somebody and you sell it in the market. Who do you call it a short a stock? I don't even know how that works. Your broker. It's, I, yeah. Can I do it myself? Yeah, you have to call your broker up, make sure your, your account's verify, is um, proof for it. You borrow the, the shares from somebody else. They don't know this. You sell it in the market. Oh, Seth, is, his hand is... If you're so stock. confident, then why not short this? That's a very good question. Um, I've agreed to not short as much for internal reasons. Your partner I already don't have, believe in it? I already have a short that's pretty big. That's pretty big in the, in the negative right now. The uh, entire market's short. I'm in the big negative big time. Is that hurting you or? I mean, except my ego. If I really believe what I believe, there's a prime example. If I really believe what I believe, I stick with the short. And what am I doing? I'm sticking with the short. Ah. It is what it is. I want to short more of the, of the entire market, but I'm not allowed to. The big short. The big short. It's not as big a short as they did. <clears throat> I'm just saying, I, I figure a smart guy like yourself might just jump on this. And if it... Clearly, I'm not smart. Because you do have the discipline to... That's exactly it. That would be disproving my discipline. That'd be going against my discipline. No, I mean, like, you're saying... I think you're trying to get at the idea that if I bought now and I rode it way high, even if it did go back, say it goes to 4K and then it, and then 
say it goes to 4K and then tomorrow bad things happen it drops to 2. You're saying I still wouldn't just sell I wouldn't have the discipline to sell. Yeah, you wouldn't cuz you'd they would say well it went from 385 to, to 170 and went back. So this one went to 900 and then went up further. It'll come back. That's the way every everybody who thinks that they're going to be the last per, it's like every single person in musical chairs think they're going they're never going to be the one with the um, with the last chair. When there's a fire in a theater and everybody's trying to get to that last door. I see the smoke coming out of the wall. I'm like, okay, I'm out of the door. It might, it might take a while for that, that fire to occur, but all of a sudden everybody's going to see the fire and go, well, I'll just run out the door. Okay, sounds good. It reminds me of my dad's fiance's son when he was like four years old. He used to say, I'm not wearing my seatbelt because if we were getting a car accident, I'll put my seatbelt on real quick. Oh, That's what I look at it like right here. That's all just sell real quick. Oh, said, said no, as no one's ever done ever. Oh. No, because the same thing that got you in it is the same thing that's going to keep you in it. Oh, it'll go back up. It always does. It needs to suck people back in. Suck them back in. It'll go from 4,000 to 2,000 back to 3,000. See? It's going back. And then all of a sudden to 1,000. Oh, but it went oh, way back to two. Oh, sweet. See? It went back to 2,000. Then 500. Then back to 1,000. See? It went back to 1,000. And you never, ever sell. If it was no. so easy to sell, why do we have crashes that just burn people? Why do we have crashes that cause people to commit suicide? Why do we have crashes that literally financially destroy people? If it's so easy to get out, oh, I'm going to be different. Okay, sounds good. You want to be different? Don't buy it. That's how you're different. You don't buy it. Now, if you're a day trader, totally different philosophy. I don't even want to have a conversation with you because we're talking about apples and oranges. I'm more power to day traders. They do something that's very difficult and they're buying purely on momentum and movements and charts. I do not do that. Mm -hmm. Too risky? It's not too risky. If you know what you're doing. I mean, I, risk is all based on what you know you're doing. Is it a form of gambling? If, if it's a form of gambling, if you don't know what you're doing. Right? Hmm. If you're counting cards, is that gambling? I guess not. I mean, if you're good at counting cards, it's not gambling. I, don't, I didn't consider buying real estate in 2009 gambling, and a lot of people consider it gambling. I didn't consider buying stocks in 2009 gambling. A lot of people considered it gambling. Well... Now they're like, oh, see, Paul, you're wrong. I'm like, well, no, actually I was right because back then when I said you should buy stocks at 700 S&P, yes, the only thing I've been wrong about was the last thousand points of it. Before then, I was right. And you guys were all selling everything saying the world's, world's going to end. Okay. Like I said, the problem being a value investor is just, it's just ego for me. It's like, yeah, I'll never be given credit for being right because there's always some reason why things change. Oh, okay, Corona, coronavirus, sure. Sounds good. At the end of the day, I will have more money than you because you did these actions. I'm fine with that. Hashtag winning. That, that's your, that's your, that's your, that's what you say, right? Very yeah. confident in that. Yeah, there'll be a better time to buy. Bethy's calling you. We have a two o'clock. Oh yeah, that's right. Answer the phone. And, oh, I, I, what yeah. time is it? Oh my God, it's 203. Yeah. You want to hear what a real lay person thinks about this? What do you think about Tesla stock being nine twenty seven right now? We're on uh, we're on the podcast now, Bethy. Oh, what do I think personally? I, I, you know, honey, I don't understand stocks and how that all works. That's the even. smartest thing I've heard in the last two weeks about anybody talking about Tesla. Do you think Thank you? you yeah. Do you think you with the, with the, this monumental rise, Beth? Last Thursday it was five seventy or five twenty two. Dude, what happened to your finger? What the fuck I know, did you do? I, I rip my rip hang nails out. Um, would you advise your friends to buy Tesla with this monumental rise? Would I advise them to buy? Like, no, never. No, it's high. You want to wait. It'll go down low. Like, I mean, it will. <laughs> but you're missing out on so much money, Beth. Honey, we've already missed out. The opportunity's gone. We just wait for it to go down, and then you can reevaluate then. So would you be surprised to hear that Tesla is worth about – four times as much as Ford and produces about 20% of the amount of cars. 80, 80 per, it's like 85% less cars and they're worth three times more than Ford. I think I only know that because Paul mentioned it on a previous podcast. I don't, think I, I don't think I mentioned that before on a podcast, but it's, I, I meant something, something similar, but I actually looked it up today. So that the whole world is just in this frenzy hype of overvaluing a company. That's what happens. That's what bubbles, that's what bubbles are. This is exactly what bubbles are. That's the funny part. We've all experienced in our lifetime so many bubbles, and yet every single time, you know what we say? It's different this time. And you ask any value investor, they'll say, what are the worst words to say in investing? It's different this time. Mm -hmm. It is never, ever different. You know what would be fun, though? I know you guys are on a podcast, but somebody said that when they were growing up, their dad 
like they were just little kids, but their dad wanted to like just see what would happen. And he let each kid get one stock of anything that they wanted, just something they were passionate about or something that they liked. In one year, they saw how much this that one stock grew. And um, yeah, they just thought it was like really, it was like a good like family project. Exercise. They had talked about it. Yeah, listen, I'm a, like, I'm a believer in that sort of, but I'm also a believer in... So I think, let me cut you off, Paul. I think what a layman's point of view, Beth, is instead of Geo, us letting Geo buy us, our nine-year-old, a, a stock of Tesla, we should have gone over the numbers of why Tesla is valued at a certain point. Because would Geo have understood that? I don't know, but why not start now? Because, I agree with you. And because by the now way, I end up being 40 and I'm buying stocks on fanboy, fandom, and belief. Is the worst reason to buy stocks. Yeah. For the long run. I mean, I would love, and we, Beth, we always talk about how these kids, they never teach these kids anything about long-term investing. Like, maybe we could tell, you know, a kid doesn't, so this is, this is. I'm comparing Geo to normal people. It's like, a kid does not see when this will ever end. So he said, I, I'd love to sell His seven. entire life has been a complete upward in the market. Yeah. His entire human existence has been that. So he said, I'd love to sell at seven, maybe 750. But what was the purpose for that? Well, like, because I guess I don't know why he wanted to sell. Of I guess, course not. I, he guess sees what? money in He's the hand. He's doing the exact same thing every other person. That's who's, why I'm. That's why I'm saying it's. Sort I, of, I once met with my PhD, my professor in college, and he once said, "If you try to get above seven percent returns, you're just being greedy." That's just as stupid a comment as Geo saying, "Well, I'll sell at seven hundred. The difference is Geo's fucking seven years old, and this guy was a PhD in freaking statistics." So my whole point isn't saying Geo's dumb. He's not dumb, but that's my whole point about investing. Everyone says the same thing, no matter your age. It's the most unbelievable thing in the world. It's the only thing in the world we like paying more money for. Everybody's yes. more excited about Tesla now because it's 900 versus when it was, if it would go to 100 tomorrow. But yet you guys all brag about, look at the good deal I got on this camera. Look at the good deal I got on these clothes. It's like, oh, but I thought if we pay less for stuff, it means it sucks. Nope, nope, only in the investing world. In the, in the, uh, in the, in the buy stuff world, I always joke about this. I see people do hours and hours and hours and hours of countless research on the internet when they buy a car. A vacuum cleaner. Yes. And when it comes to buying a stock, it's like, oh, it's a good company. It's a good company. We I should believe buy in it. it. Oh, yeah. Who's the idiot who said that? Me. Oh, yeah. That's right. I was saying I did believe in it. It was really, <laughs> I did believe in it. It was that's really low and other people weren't believing in it. Like, but the, you're telling me the belief doesn't mean jack shit if they're. No, belief, believes, belief means a lot if it's grounded in reasonable assessments. If you're talking about a stock for the long run, what are those reasonable assessments? Cash flow, balance sheet, though all the income statement, the prospects. I don't I do agree with paying more for higher growth companies, but four times more than the companies are trying to become like? Yeah, Beth Paul was saying that if it if it did end up becoming as big as on paper, as big as Ford, then the stock would be still lower thirty six hundred dollars. No. You're saying if it grow four times, it should it, yeah, it should go up more four more times, according to your theory. Like, well, if it grows four yeah. times, well, no, because if it grows four times, it should be worth what Ford's worth, which is... What is Ford worth? $36 billion, and it's valued in... Stocks, I mean. Oh, it doesn't matter what the dollar amount is. You could have... You could have... If it doesn't a, matter? No, if there's 1,000 shares at $10 a share, what's right. it worth? You're right. It's worth um, whatever that is, uh, 10,000. And if you have 10,000 shares at a dollar a share, what's it worth? 10,000. Okay. Same thing. What did our, you say the Ford stock was? Ford is currently, the whole company's value market cap is $36 billion. And Tesla's is 166. Ah. So but it's one share of Ford. It doesn't stock matter. Right now. Don't worry about that. That doesn't matter. So the numbers per stock doesn't matter. Because you have to look at how many shares are outstanding. Berkshire Hathaway is I selling see. for 330000 a share or something. 330000 a yeah, share. Yeah, Warren Buffett's company. I see. And why does he do that, by the way? Because he doesn't want speculators buying and selling the stock on a whim. He wants uh, long-term owners. Sound like anybody wow. else? Well, Beth, it seems like we're going to have to wait till the economy really turns to it start. Seems to me cashing in on live your life. Cashing in Is on that the Paul singing. That was me singing. Do you like it? Oh, well, I no, I don't think I did. That. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Beth. Thanks for joining us. Giving the. The uh, layman's point of view on stocks. Yeah, I'm sorry. It was lame. That's what it lame, was. Lame, it was the lame, lame per, <laughs> laywoman's. All right, uh, we'll, we'll we'll call you back, babe. We'll call you okay, soon. Okay, bye, bye, bye. All right. Well, we wanted to talk about something else. We did. Should we do that in a second podcast? I'm just glad that you explained this to me because you talked. This is why we need the whiteboard, by the way. This is exactly why we need the whiteboard. 
Right, Don? Don, we got to get that set up. Oh, it is. Yeah, yes. that's exactly why we need the whiteboard because I could have drawn these things out and said, okay. I think the whiteboard needs to go like right here. No, I wouldn't be able to. What am I going to do? That's the worst idea ever. Well, we got to be able to. Anyway, we have a big jam board like Grant Cardone now where Paul can write on it and draw funny shapes. We'll play Pictionary. It's going to be great. We've got to figure out how to utilize it on the podcast. Pictionary. Hangman. Hangman. All right. Well, I hope you Tesla fan people learn something. They'll probably just... They didn't. They're going to hate me. Yeah, it's very easy to say, like, well, Paul's full of shit. And I am full of shit. Yeah, but man, I'm trying to... I could try to convince my friends, like, I have never... I met a lot of people in this world. Yeah. And um, I don't know anyone as success, financially successful as you. Oh, well, thank you. But you know what I'll also say? When people say, like, doesn't it bother you? You've missed out the last four or five years. Yeah, it does. But I will say this. My returns when things go down are going to be so big. I'm not even going to think about this. This will look silly. It's going to look, it's going to be a blip. And people, when I say so big, I'm talking about my combination of real estate, stocks, and businesses. All those three, because I buy value. It's hard to be on the wrong side of winning so much like you are. I am on the wrong side of winning right now. Everyone else is like, yeah. Oh my God, Tesla, it's the best. It, that's my point though. Everybody <clears throat> in the world is winning except for me. That's how, and except for the value investors I believe in. Mm-hmm. Value investors do worse when everybody's doing better. Yeah. Value investors do better when everybody's doing worse. Game, set, match, checkmate, GG, trick or treat. Thanks for joining us. Subscribe below, please. Please subscribe. If you like to hear, you like to hear what I don't think a lot of people, other people are saying. All the news articles are saying how this, this thing's going to skyrocket. Can I brag about something? Well, you're very good at that. Go ahead. I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> a month ago, we had 87 subscribers on YouTube. As of today, we have 215. 216. 216. This yeah. is a big testament to some to work Don's done. It's a big testament to everybody subscribing. Keep subscribing. Uh, our goal is to get to 10,000 by the end of the year. I think we're going to beat that at this pace. I've been asked by, f- by people who are important to me in the past, is why would you do a podcast to all- and only get like 27 views? And I said, well, we have to get 27 before we get 28. Yes. And uh, I look at podcasts like Joe Rogan, and uh, boy, I saw one. I was going to send one to you yesterday. It was just laughable. The production was laughable. They got hundreds of thousands of subscribers. And we'll get there. And we'll get there. And we have. And the reason is like we can have these honest conversations, which I can put myself out there. And I like the fact that we're writing this. We're putting this stuff on the internet now. So you know, the biggest problem I had when the market fell was afterwards having people said like, "Oh, I saw that coming. Oh yeah, show me your portfolio. Oh, what well, was all there it was my clients. I'm like, oh yeah, show me their portfolios. Why well, can't? It's private. Block out all their numbers." Just show me the portfolios that you actually did that. They didn't. I'm here sitting there saying, hey, I was wrong on Amazon. Okay, I'm fine with that. I was wrong on the market so far. I'm fine with that. I'm wrong on Tesla so far. I'm fine with that. I'm wrong on Netflix so far. I'm fine with that. But I have to say is, judge me over a full market cycle. Everyone's scared of a full bull and bear market. You, show me those. You know I own a shit ton of Netflix too. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, He's got Seth. Him. Just let me. Just could yeah. you buy less revenue with more money, please? Just, just let me. Let me look at this record. Hold on a second. Okay. Seth is the king of buying less profit with as much money as possible. Okay. You know that scene in The Big Short when um when Michael Scott or uh, what's his name Steve Carell is at a table. Michael Scott. And he says <laughs> he gets up and he goes short everything that guy touches. Everybody out there short everything Seth touches because he's like <laughs> he just chases these dollars. Uh, uh, no, that's not that's not actually true. Okay. <laughs> you at no point would it cross your mind at no no point would it cross your mind to say uh, that I got in at the right time. Maybe you did. I doubt it. But I, I got in for the right reasons, though. That th- and it does matter. How many people you think are getting into certain stocks for the right reasons? That's exactly the point. But if you have a look, what I wrote on Facebook yesterday. I do want to write this. Howard Marks did this in his closing, not Facebook, LinkedIn. His closing remarks. In his recent memo, success in investing doesn't come from buying good things, but from buying things well. And it's essential to know the difference. It's not a matter of what you buy, but what you pay for it. That wasn't yesterday. Let me tell you, but that is an important factor. The other thing I said was yesterday. Investing is a game of skill, meaning inferior players can't expect to be above average winners in the long run. But it also includes elements of chance, meaning skill won't win out every time. In the long run, superior skill will overcome the impact of bad luck. But in the short run, 
Luck can overwhelm skill, and the two can be indistinguishable. So what does that mean, Seth? It means that the people who are screaming how great Tesla is, it looks like they're really skilled at what they're doing, making money. It feels like it is. Feels like but it. But it's luck. Looks like it. And yeah. if you have a good, if you have good skill and a good foundation of why you, you have the good reasons, if you have the valid reasons why you buy something, there will be periods of time when you look stupid. Because bad, because the good luck for others will be bad luck for you. But if you have the right price, it's just like eating healthy and not eating healthy. If you have two people, one always eats McDonald's, one always eats healthy. In the first 30 years of your life, how much difference their health going to be with modern medicine? But Not eventually something, they'll be like, okay, this guy, that's the way I look at investing. Mm. If you always eat junk food, you are investing in all these, fly, all these like exciting companies. But I'd rather eat healthy. I bought 20 shares of Netflix yep. at $111. What's it at now? It's at $367. Wow, you've tripled your money. It's an increase of 228%. That's incredible. Good for you. Sell? I'm not going to tell you to do anything. Well, who is? Same person who told you to buy Netflix. It was, just, it, was just a, it was just a thing to buy. Yep, it was a great baseball card. It was. Hey, close your phone. What is Netflix making revenue every year? How many subscribers did they have last quarter? How much are they making pro- How much make a profit? I don't know any of that. How much do they have in cash? How much do they have in debt? You did more research buying your business for $47,000 than you did buying Netflix. And you'd be like, well, I only paid X amount of dollars for Netflix. I don't see a difference. 2,000 bucks. I paid 2,000 bucks for 20 shares in Netflix. 2,200 yeah. bucks. And you have no idea what Netflix, you're an owner in a company. You are an owner of Netflix and you have no idea how much it makes, how much cash it has, how much it owes, and what its prospects are and how well it's doing in the last quarter or the last year or the last five years. How many subscribers do they have total? I don't know any of it. How many, how, many, how many weddings do you have for this year? 15. Oh, really? Interesting. Hmm, so you know that. <laughs> but you were an owner in Netflix, and you don't know anything about Netflix financially. All you know is, yeah, gee, it's a really cool company. Well, congratulations, it's a cool company. When I didn't have you in my life, the first person I talked to for stock advice, they told me just to buy stock in companies I liked. That's, a, that's Peter Lynch. Oh, people always thought, play, say Peter Lynch says that. He didn't say that, but that's great. That's what I did. And it's a terrible idea. Yeah. It's literally a terrible idea. Buy stocks and companies that you like yeah. that are selling for a good price. I, I think uh, the advice came from, well, they're all going to go up. Oh, okay. So you might as well buy one you like. Please tell me you're joking. No. <laughs> They go up. That's the point of buying this, them. Who is this moron who said this? Do I know the person? Not at all. You'd never meet him. You never will. Oh, well. But the point is they're all going to go up, so you might as well Why? get one you like. Uh, that's what the stock market does, right? As a whole? Yeah. Individual companies don't go under? Well, people don't... Like People like me don't think like that. No. Uh, all right. Folks, I, uh, Seth is an owner of Netflix and knew nothing about Netflix. I had to tell you the things about Tesla. Oh, you're not an owner of Tesla anymore, though, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Told me to get out, so I did. <laughs> 87 shares. Oh, boy. He'd have 50000 more dollars, guys. It's a lot of money in my world. It's a ton of money in anybody's world, including mine. You'd love Masterclass. I'm reading uh, I'm, uh, the guy who wrote the book Never Split the Difference, Chris Voss, the FBI interrogation oh, guy. Oh, that's a... He has a Masterclass now. No. So you read... So when he says, yeah, I need to talk about Limo King, and you're like, that doesn't sound very convincing. Yeah. And it's like the art of reading, the way people talk, mirroring, which I realize I'm actually. So Lisa good. always says about me, not always, but she'll say, she said to me in the past, when I've noticed she's in a bad mood. She'll say, you realize I'm in a bad mood before I realize I'm in a bad mood. I'm like, really? I'm very sensitive to it. Well, you can analyze the way people say things. Yeah. You're very in tune to that. It does get me in trouble because I don't analyze what I'm saying quite often. <laughs> I don't think it gets you in trouble. It does like, in trouble the, with you. Like, you'll be like, car, wait a minute, you said this. Taking hey. the car though, we were coming back from lunch and you said something, you were like very pensive. And I was looking at you, I'm like, what's in your mind? What's on your mind grapes there, Seth? I think that about you sometimes. Yeah, I mean, just ask, I'll be honest with you. Like, um, I know like your family is going through some stuff, so I thought maybe something's on your mind and I want to bother you. Oh, my family? Your girlfriend's family. Oh, yes. It's, uh, that's what's been bothering her lately, which is understandable. So. But you know, the funny thing is, and this is very selfish of me, 
I always want to know if I did anything wrong. Like I might've said something that might've upset her. And then, and she says, no, no, no. And then finally she goes, well, yeah, it's, it's my family situation. I'm like, well, just freaking tell me that. I understand. You know, how do you, how do you deal with that stuff? But listen, it, that's what's, I'm not trying to bring it back to investing. Emotions are very hard. That's what this is. These stocks are all emotional right now because you don't know anything about the company. So it's all based on emotion. Every time I get upset about the stock market, you know what I do? I go look at the data again. And guess what I think every single time I look at the data? No, nope, I'm right. It's just going to take longer to play out than I expected. Wow. 200 228% return on investment for Netflix. Yep. Well, maybe it'll go to $900 a share next. I'm embarrassed. Why are you embarrassed? I'm embarrassed that I bought that stuff. You shouldn't be embarrassed by it. You did everything that 99 point. Listen, there are money managers out there who do the exact same thing. Yeah. Oh, well, of course. Why, well, they're all idiots. They're all morons. Because of you, I came and like look people in the eye when they're oh, like, oh, I, I do this. I'm a, I want to say hi to one of our biggest fans also, Jimmy Bingo. <laughs> Jimmy, uh, please reach out to Mikey and Andrew and tell them I uh, mentioned you on the podcast. Because like now when they're like, what are they? real estate broker? Realtor, they say that, and I think, oh, oh, Paul, Paul, Paul would. I like, have my own business. Paul uh, yeah, would what light do you your do? Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm an investment rep. Uh, what do you mean? I was watching a show recently, and they said, oh, this person's a real estate genius. I'm like, what makes them a real estate genius? Because they can, you can tell them you want a four bedroom, two bath. And they find you all the four bedroom, two baths in your price range. I'm like, and that's. And you buy one. And you bought one. Okay, cool. And I have friends who are realtors. I have a lot of friends who are realtors, and they probably hate me when I say this. But I'm like. Hey, I have a lot of friends who are money managers. I have a lot of friends who are real estate. Okay, you all, you all, you know. Well, I said this, you know, I've had people go through some career changes and, and, and one day they're working for blank store and the next day they got, they're a realtor and they, they're showing you really great deals on Facebook and you're like, yeah, what in the hell is that? And how do they know it's a great deal? Oh, this is a fabulous deal. Oh, okay, cool. What makes it a fabulous deal? It was a fabulous deal. What the f Why don't you buy it? Yeah. Why is it doing on the market? There's a house, there's a house across the street from my brother's house. In this market, it's been for sale for over a year. What does that tell me? Way too high priced. It's it, something's in that. I don't know the track record, but here's the thing. If you get a lot of showings and nobody's buying, something's wrong in your house. If you get no showings, your price is wrong. Because mm -hmm. when it comes to pricing, people look at, when people want to go see a house, sure. they look at the inside on pictures and they look at the square footage and the price and say, oh, does this seem right? If they're not going to see the house, it means probably something's wrong with the pricing. But if they go there and they don't make an offer, something's wrong with the house. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they're not getting a lot of traffic to the house or if people are going there and going and eh, i don't want to buy it because i think it's a beautiful home on the outside i think it's absolutely stunning but like i say to people does that mean you should pay a billion dollars for it it's a beautiful home no because there's still a level of value Go think, think about it this way when people talk about undervalued versus overvalued is it logically possible that everybody could want the undervalued thing is it possible that something could be undervalued that everybody in the world wants no it's not possible. So you're telling me everybody in the world is right, about, is right on Tesla? I'm like, wrong on Tesla? I'm like, well, if you're trying to buy things that you perceive to be at value or undervalued and everybody in the world wants this, does it make it logical sense That's that it'd be undervalued? undervalued at all. It's no, not possible. It's not possible to be undervalued. And how is it possible that a month ago it was, it was $300 and now it's tripled in value? Oh, What's October happened in the last... Was, October was 200 two, thirteen. How is it possible it's, almost, it's quadrupled in value? Idea. Hype. All hype. If you can acknowledge that, we're on the right path because it is all hype. It's not possible for a company like Tesla to have quadrupled in value in a matter of four months unless it was massively undervalued, massively. Because that's when they came out with the truck that nobody liked and it had mistakes at the showing. They're like, this thing is bulletproof. They threw a rock at it, shatter. I heard people say that marketing people did that on purpose. They could, they, it would spread like wildfire. That's a good spin too. Maybe they did do it on purpose. I don't know. Didn't, didn't uh, Elon just go, the oh, no, worse. Oh, my fucking God. Is that what he said? And um, they now make shirts that says Tesla, like, we're unbreakable, and it's got a picture of the shattered window <laughs> or something. You know, like, they can make fun of themselves a bit, but. Hey, listen, I think that's the right thing to do. Make fun of yourself when you screw up. All right, I screwed up. Here we go. Move on. Thanks for joining us. Subscribe below. If you want to hear, if you want to make a billion dollars in your lifetime, listen to Paul, I guess. <laughs> no. Listen, I, I, I don't, I'm not saying that there are multiple ways to skin a cat, right? I'm saying that. We haven't used that one in a while. I just, all I'm saying is, if you try to tell me that Tesla is a good investment, I'm going to push back. If you tell me I'm buying it to trade it, I'm not going to push back. Okay. But you know, telling me it's a good investment is literally an asinine comment. It's like saying that I look like Brad Pitt. 
Well, you are very handsome. Well, I appreciate that. I'm not saying that I'm not uh, a cute boy, but I'm sitting there saying I'm, I'm not Brad Pitt. <laughs> cute boy. It, 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 it's impossible. It's like, you know what I mean? I'm not going to be able to look at this table and say it's a square. Um, I never thought that I would be even uh, this well off and have the mindset, uh, the business mindset that you've put me in in just a few few short years being 38 yet still feeling like I have the rest of life ahead of me and making uh 60 more years my friend better decisions and that's why uh, we started this podcast because I just kept asking you all these questions we ask you Don, I mean I don't know if Don does it as much but I ask you these questions all damn day whether we're at yeah. your house playing Don basketball. never asks questions well Don, Don's soaking it in <laughs> okay there Don's too busy being grumpy in the morning hey Don hi <laughs> He's off his mic now. (laughs) Okay, subscribe below. Learn from us. Thanks for listening. Peace out, homies.